Today we invite a big fan of junkies to help us know more about those great boys. Let's welcome Fu Mei. Nice to meet you, Xiao Ti. Thank you for inviting me. Nice to meet you too. First of all, I want to ask you about Zhang Keats. We all know that he was definitely a great and wonderful poet. But why do you like him, or why is he so special for you? While there are still、uh, other great poets. Well, he had a miserable life, and he seemed to keep losing during his 25 year life. He once said that I will write independently. He didn't want to be affected by others, and he didn't want readers to feel others' existence in his poetry either.、Uh, he was not a productive writer, but still leave many wonderful points. Which of them is your favorite? You're right, because of his short life, he couldn't write too much. However, what he left are all masterpieces. When it comes to my favorite, I always think of the Eve of Saint Agnes. Why is this poem your favorite? We all know that Oz are the most famous poem written by kids. Although the Eve of Saint Agnes may not be the most famous work kids wrote in 1890, but the hallmarks of that year, death, sex, and dangers of the imaginations, are stamped all over it. Oh, really? Can you introduce more about the details of this poem for us? Yeah, of course. The Eve of Sun Agnes is a long narrative poem, which seems to retell the different versions of Romeo and Juliet. January twentieth, the eve of the feast of Sun Agnes, in a medieval castle. Madeline, the daughter of the lord of the castle, is expecting for the coming of the midnight, and then she can have a magical vision of her lover in her dream, her Agnes dreams. When it comes to the evening, Porfirio, the lover of Madeline, is planning to get into the castle unobserved. However, Madeline's family think Porfirio to be an enemy, and they try to kill him. Fortunately, Porfirio meets Madeline's old nurse Angela, and she tells him about Madeline's quaint superstition. And at once, Madeline believes in this idea. It will become reality by his presence in her room at midnight. Flashes into his mind. Porfirio convinces Angela that he will do nothing to harm Madeline, and she agrees to help him. Angela finally leads Porfirio to Madeline's chamber, and Porfirio hides himself in the closet to wait for Madeline. Madeline comes into her room, takes up all her dresses and jewelry, and falls asleep with the thoughts of the wonderful vision she will soon have. Her belief produces the per- ex- Expected results, and her sleep becomes the sleep of enchantment. And Porfirio, looking as if immortalized, fills her dreams. After Madeline falls asleep, Porfirio gets out of the closet and approaches Madeline's bed. Porfirio tries to awake Madeline by whispering, but it doesn't work. He picks up her lute and plays it near her ear. Suddenly, Madeline opens her eyes but stays in the grip of the magic spell. When she sees Porfirio in his ordinary mortality, the contrast is so great that she even thinks that the human Porfirio is on the point of death. She wants her visionary Porfirio back. Her wish is granted, and the magic is powerful enough to enable Porfirio, beyond a mortal man impatient far, to enter her dream vision, and there they are united in a mystic marriage. When the magic visionary stay comes to an end, Madeline tells Porfirio about her fear that he will leave her alone. Porfirio, who now addresses her as his bride, urges her to leave the castle with him. Awake, arise, my love, and fearless be, for o'er the thousand moors I have a home for thee. 
the two leave the castle undetected and go out into the storm. That night, the Baron and all his guests have bad dreams, and Angela and old Beatsman all die. Stanza one. Keith starts by describing how the night is so frigid and establishes the deathly sound of silence. In the meantime, there is a very chilly beastman, semi-paralyzed by the cold, who's praying. The speaker uses a simile to compare his first dead breath to incense from a censer, which would be used in a Catholic mass service. And we can notice the colors of those of death and winter, black and white. Keats has no need to mention the whiteness of snow, and the hare and owl in their winter camouflage, and the huddled sheep are the living embodiments of the color white and the suspended animation of the winter. In stanza 14, Angela tells Porfiro that she doesn't think that Porfiro's mentioning of the holiday will make it less likely that Madeline's family will kill him. She disabuses him. Angela can't even believe that Porfiro will get into the castle unscathed. Also, this speaking of Angela reveals that she thinks this whole plan of Madeline wanting to see her future husband is silly. And she laughs at it. Angela thinks the whole plan is all Bellany because Madeline put all her trust in good angels, but this whole presto magic vision then will not happen in Angela's mind. In stanza 15, from the last stanza, we can see that Angela tries to tell Porfiro about Madeline's plan of having an Agnes dream, and this stanza describes the reaction of Porfiro. After hearing about Madeline's plan from Angela, Porfiro has not completely caught on what Angela says, but he gets that it has something to do with Madeline and the Saint Agnes Eve which may be why he is staring at her as if she gets the keys to a whole bunch of mothering related secrets. And actually, she does. Porfiro is basically on Angela's side with regards to the ritual. He doesn't think that anything is going to happen, and it bothers him to think of Madeline, a true believer, but in her faith, in enchantment code. In stanza 32, the last word in this poem is code. So the poem in some ways ends as it began, with code and physical suffering. In this stanza, all we know about Madeline and Porfiro is that they fled away into the swarm. We never learn whether or not they live happily ever after. Instead, we hear about the other people back in the castle. The Baron and all the party guests would be nightmared and spend all night dreaming about witch and demon and large coughing worm. It's strange that Porfiro and Madeline ran away to live their own life, but everyone around them was dreaming about death. This makes the couple's end feel even more uncertain. Thanks for Fume's introduction, and now let's welcome she and her two friends to tell us more about the details.